Hello friends, this video on Kinetic Theory Part 19 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Please make sure that you have watched all the videos from Part 1 to Part 18 before going ahead with Part 19. We will now start another new topic that is called the Law of Equipartition of Energy. This is something related to the kinetic theory of gases. But before we discuss the law of equipartition of energy, I will introduce a term called degrees of freedom. First of all, we should understand what do we mean by degrees of freedom. Once we are clear about that, then we will discuss the law of equipartition of energy. What do we mean by degrees of freedom? Independent displacements or rotations that specify the orientation of a body or a system. Degree of freedom. What do you think or what do you get to know at the first thought when you hear the term degree of freedom? That means to what extent a particular substance is free. Right? For example, let us consider a real life scenario. For example, you stay at your home with your parents. Your parents have permitted you to go to the nearby playground and play with your friends in the evening between 5 to 6. Right? You have an elder brother and your parents have permitted your elder brother to go to the nearby playground and play from 5 to 8 in the evening. That means the degree of freedom of your elder brother is greater than yours. That means he is more free to play. He has got 5 to 8. That is he has got more freedom to play and to spend his time in his own way in the playground. Similarly, your degree of freedom is lesser because you are restricted by somebody more. So degree of freedom will talk about the independent displacements or rotations that will specify the orientation of a body. If we have an object, to what extent it can move, whether it can move or it can rotate or it can vibrate. So what is its limitations? To what extent is it free to move about to specify its orientations? That is known as degree of freedom. For example, let us consider this room. Right. Now, suppose I tie a rope from one wall to the opposite wall. This is a rope. Consider it as a thick rope. Now, I take a ball and I tell you that what do you think will be the degree of freedom or what do you think the ball can move on this particular rope. If you see, there is no other way of moving for this ball other than moving straight. This is the only way this ball can move. If it has to move over this rope. So this is the only way it can move. So this ball will have one degree of freedom. That is it can move only in one particular dimension. So when the ball is restricted to move in a line, it can move only in one way. Now let us consider this ball lying on the floor. What is this floor? This floor is basically two dimensional. Now the ball can move along two different directions. It can move along this direction. It can move along this direction. Right? On the floor it can move lengthwise as well as widthwise. That means this ball has two degrees of freedom. So when I talk it in terms of two dimension, it has two degrees of freedom. Similarly, if I ask you, if I just throw this ball in space, it is a three dimensional space, right? Then it has three degrees of freedom. So now I just talked of the movement, the translations, right? So I, I hope you are getting some idea about what is degree of freedom. It tells you in how many ways that particular object can move or rotate or vibrate. So that is known as degrees of freedom. It, this is basically the independent displacements or rotations that specify the orientation of a body or system.
Now there are three different categories of degrees of freedom. Translational degree of freedom, rotational degree of freedom and vibrational degree of freedom. Now we will talk about each of them as we go ahead. So let us start with Thank you. Please visit examfear.com to watch free educational videos, try free online tests, get the best quality study materials, study from the best tutors and mentors and much more. Thank you once again.